So on any given project, there's a lot of really grunt work that needs to get done. Um, there's a lot of things that get you know, handed over to interns to keep up to date or you know, someone will go in and interrupt people who are doing design and saying, hey, could you, you know, get this piece of information for me or could you, you know, make me a new PDF set you know, of this particular set of sheets. And our software in general is all about taking those manual tasks and those repetitive tasks and automating them so that you can set them up once and then you can make it so that they just happen automatically in the background, uh, overnight or on demand, whatever makes sense. So for example, if we were working on a school uh, that was being designed, there's various people who are not users of Autodesk Revit who would like to, to be able to experience what the design looks like and feels like in 3D. So, you know, a teacher, for example, could say, show me my classroom. And it would not just show the, the outside of the building, but it would zoom into the building and give them a view of their classroom and let them look around. The reaction when customers see the way that they can experience the building and zoom in in just a regular web browser has been fantastic. I think the, the biggest reason to use the View and Data API is that no one is going to be able to produce a better 3D visualization with the, the highest level of fidelity as Autodesk is going to be able to. And so, you know, ultimately you really want the 3D model to be accurate, um, attractive, and fast. We'd like to focus on what we really do best and leverage the tools that Autodesk is providing. It feels very collaborative uh, the way that we work with the people involved on the project.